Right, oh guys, the mailman just turned up and delivered something special. Let's take a look at it. There she is, package from Tackle Warehouse over in America. Haven't uh, received a package from these guys for a few years. I used to love doing this when I was younger and the Aussie dollar was up over a dollar. Um, but it's been down around that 75 cent mark for a long time. So I haven't done an order. I do like to support the Australian stores where I can. I normally get most of my gear from Outback Angler and Dubbo. But just wanted to try a few new baits this uh, cod season that you can't really get over here. And also wanted to get some bass stuff that I reckon will work over here that I'll watch the guys over in America, especially the tactical bass and those type of dudes use a lot. So let me get a knife and we'll rip straight into this bad boy, eh? So not a massive order, uh, got a few different things, coming to a total of 251 bucks American. So exchange rate, about 350 bucks with $45 postage. So 350 bucks to get it to my door. What we've got here, which, you know, it's not too bad. Straight off the back, you've got your Tackle Warehouse Essentials. Trucker hat, and of course, tackle warehouse, tackle warehouse t-shirt. You can't do a tackle warehouse order without getting a t-shirt. Looking good. So we'll start with some of the bass stuff I've got. Straight up, we've got some X-Zone muscle back finesse crawls. So a 3.25 inch uh, crawl imitation. Uh, see uh, Brendan Palahniuk use these a lot over in America chasing the bass on the Bass Master Elite series. Pretty cool dude. And I've also seen a fair few other people use them on YouTube over in America. So I thought I'd give them a go over here. Uh, they do look very good. Give you a look at them in the slow-mo. Uh, my idea with these is to rig them on the back of jigs when fishing for bass. So. Probably won't be doing a lot of bass fishing now. Uh, probably got these a bit late uh, with cod season back back in the works, but am going to be fighting around Newcastle over New Year's and over Christmas, New Year's. So we'll try to get out to the Hunter Valley dams and, and sting a few bass on this new bass stuff that I've got. The other thing that I was going to use these for is on a Tokyo rig. So these are the Tokyo rig VMC wide gate hooks. And I'd recommend, if you've got no idea what these are, maybe do a YouTube search on what a Tokyo rig is and have a look. Looks pretty cool. Not really used in Australia yet. Obviously, there'd be guys out there giving it a crack, but haven't seen much on it. And I reckon this will be a really good one to target the Aussie bass and the impoundments. Stuff like this, you know, going to be good for bass at the moment, but down the track, you never know. We could upsize these baits. Tokyo rigs, all this type of stuff, and start using it on our Murray Cod, trying to mix it up a bit. So, basically, what the Tokyo rig is, it's just a, she's just a like a weedless hook, worm hook, weedless worm hook. Um, got two O's there, so the smaller size they offer because normally they fish a bigger hook for their largemouth bass over there. Obviously, our bass aren't as big as those, so go on the two O. And basically, all it is is it's just got a piece of like heavy duty wire. It comes down, it's not, it's on an, on an O-ring attached to the hook, but it's actually separate, like, it's separate from the hook. And what that allows you to do is put a weight, uh, you just put a weight through that wire, which I've got here. So I've got some tung, tungsten 3 8 of an ounce weights. Put them on the bottom, grab a set of pliers, and just fold it over, and Basically, your weight will sit below your lure in the water, so you, like a couple of inches below it, and that'll go along the rock and bottom while your bait sits up and flutters across the top. So, looks awesome. The guys over in America use it all the time, and it's effective. It's only a new technique for the Americans. It's only sort of been around for a couple of years, but it's smoking the big bass over there, so. One to try over here. Don't know how to go, but pretty keen to give it a go. Always keen to try new techniques. Do recommend, guys. I love sitting down on YouTube, going proper YouTube benders, and uh, watching the stuff that they do over there in Amer America for their largemouth bass. 
A lot of their largemouth bass stuff is very applicable for the Murray Cod over here and also the bass fishing, but I mainly watch it for the Murray Cod type of stuff and can't recommend it enough. We've got a lot of tips and try new techniques just from watching some of the content that they put out over there. So if you are looking uh, to watch a few, I can't recommend tactical bassing enough. Cars, what's going on? Uh, not too much. Uh, right, sorry about that, cuz with the interruption via phone call. Uh, what I was just saying there is, um, yeah, can't recommend tactical bassin and wide to fish, so check those YouTube channels out if you do want to watch some uh, cool bass, largemouth bass content over in the States and pick up a few things that you can maybe impart over here. Anyway, that's the Tokyo rig stuff, so I've got some baits, got the actual Tokyo rig BMC hook set up, and the weights. I also got these big bite baits, your mama, <laughs> three inch your mamas. So just another crawl, um, crawl plastic that I'll also use on the Tokyo rig, uh, also on the back of the jig. So that was pretty cool. The, not as good as the uh, the X zones. The X zones look smick as, um, but they still look good. And they were cheaper, I think. So. Nice and cheap. And the last thing I got for the bass was these Hog Farmer Spunk Shad 3.5. So what it is, basically just going to use these as a chatterbait trailer. So I've been using the Daiwa Steve's cover chatters a fair bit uh, whenever I've been bass fishing. I've done, done some bass fishing. Uh, this year, this off season, cod off season, and really enjoyed it. And the uh, chatterbait smashed it for me. So I've been looking, I bet, have been running the bait junkies, uh, two and a half and 3.2 minnows on the back, but uh, the guys over on Tactical Bass and recommend these uh, hog farmers a lot. So I thought I'd give them a go. It actually doesn't have a paddle tail on the back, uh, as you'll see here, but the action that the chatter blade itself gives the lure. Uh, we'll just get that tail kicking nicely. So you don't want too much action. That's what I find with a paddle tail on the back of a chatterbait. It can actually be too much action and throw it out of rhythm uh, with the chatterbait itself. So give these a go and see and see how they do. But uh, they look pretty schmick. I've seen them before. Brucey from AYC actually uh, also got me onto these. Um, he's been running them on the back of his and had some good success on the Aussie, ba Aussie bass already. So one to check out. Now we'll jump onto the cod gear. Uh, if you've seen my little season review preview that I put up the other day, I did say that I'm going to get back into the, some river fishing this season. Uh, have been doing a lot of empowerment stuff over the last few years and really given the rivers away, but keen to get back into it, keen to put some Ks under the belt, work these pies off and uh, yeah, catch some river fish. So to do that, I bought a couple of crankbaits, so six cents, six cents, terrible. Cloud Nine Magnum SB, it's 104 mil, 1.5 ounce, dives to five to 10 foot. And that's them, the bad boys. They look schmick, they're just a big square bill crankbait. Um, I'm chuffed with those, they're gonna work unreal. Uh, not only for the rivers as well, I'm, probably give these a bit of a crack in the impoundments, especially when that uh, water starts to cool off in late autumn. I reckon these might be a goer on the edge of weed beds and stuff. So they're not gonna get down too deep, but something different than a swim bait that some of the fish might not have seen up in that type of zone before. So pretty keen to give them a chuck. And I've got one other crankbait, which is the Strike King KVD square bill. Uh, what's the specs on this bad boy? Doesn't really have any. It's actually a bit smaller than the six cents one, so not as big. Oh, it's, there's bugger, bugger all in it, but it's a bit smaller. Square bill, so same, um, same depth range. Uh, seven, seven, it's dives are seven foot, so similar type of thing, just a different brand. So I just sort of get a couple uh, to see which was better because the hard thing about buying online. Is you actually you don't really know what you're buying if you haven't bought it before, so you've got to take a stab in the dark. And I wouldn't say this one's as good as the other ones, but still pretty happy with it. Looks pretty sick. 
and the strikings were a little bit cheaper as well. Right, I will move on to some of the impoundment uh, baits that I got. I only got a couple, but this is actually the main reason I want to do the tackle warehouse order, was to get this bait in particular. The Huddleston Deluxe swim bait, eight inch, uh, ROF 16, these ones. So if you don't know, ROF stands for rate of fall, and these ones are 16, so they fall at 16 feet per 10 seconds, I believe. Um, you can also get these in ROF zero, so which is top water, ROF five, ROF 12, and the 16. So that number just equates to how many feet it'll sink on slack line over 10 seconds. So Worky from our back end actually gave me a 10 inch one of these bad boys last year to try in an ROF five. And I gave, it a I gave it a bit of a crack when I was down at Burrenjark. I didn't do any good on it, but I was bloody confident in it and it looked smick. So I thought I'd get a couple of eights in the ROF 16s and give them a whirl this summer, uh, especially using the live scope. I think they're gonna be a killer bait um, and really keen to try them. Now, I'd say these, these swim baits have probably caught more largemouth bass over 10 pounds than any other than every other swim bait combined over in America. They are the most well-known ducks guts of soft swim baits over there. So they've got plenty of runs on the board. Haven't seen them used much over here in Australia yet. Obviously there is guys that would be throwing them and I know a few people that have thrown them, but they haven't taken off. So I'm hoping not many fish have seen these and when they do, they're gonna crunch them. So I've got two, two of those. Um, if they do work, I'm gonna be doing another order ASAP for heaps more, but I'm pretty confident. Got it in that rainbow trout color. They look deadly. Cannot wait. And then the last lure that I got was a couple of big 10 inch mag drafts. Now you can get these in Australia, I know, but I just thought I'd get a couple when I was doing the order just to fill the order up a bit and they are a little bit cheaper over there. So, although I could have got them locally, I just thought, I bumped the order up, had some, uh, I had to pay for the post anyway, so may as well fill it up, and I thought, why not get some big dog mag drafts? Now, I haven't actually used these before. Zachy Boy used them uh, at the end of last season when I was with him and caught some real nice fish on them, and there have been a fair few people starting to uh, nail some crackers on these things in particular. So, thought I'd jump in. Uh, give them a whirl, they look sick in the water, I have seen them in the water, and yeah, there's a bit of a bit of a trend there with what I've got, I've only got the swim baits, I've got four swim baits and all of them are soft plastic swim baits, so uh, if you can read between the lines, that's what I'm going to try and focus on this season, um, I think the soft plastic swim bait game is going to be a real, uh, real game changer, and we're going to see that really come to the fore, uh, the hard body swim baits are really uh, dominated the last few years with your stuff like your jackals, gantrels, gannias, gigantrels. But I think those, all these big Murray Court have seen so many of those over the last few seasons that something a little more subtle again in the soft body swim bait is going to really be a game changer. So that's what I'm banking on. Could be completely wrong, but hopefully I'm not. Anyway, guys, that's a quick little video just on my tackle warehouse order. Obviously, it's not a massive one. Uh, but it's just good to get a few new baits, keen to try them now. It's always good where the mailman turns up and drops off the package. Get keen as, get these, gonna do some tinkering. I've gotta put, put some trebles and do some rigging on these hards and on those mag drafts and then play with the Tokyo rigs in the pool. So it's gonna be good fun for the next few days and I can't wait to get out on the water and try them. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.